This little film is the first of five films recording the visit that Sandra and I made to Cuba in 2004. And here we are in our hotel, the Hotel Presidente, at the extreme end of the promenade. We moved on from Havana and moved down country east, visiting various parts of the island and concluded our holiday back in Havana. But that's five films away. The Hershey system, which is our first stop off, is of course associated with the American company Hershey who made and marketed the Hershey chocolate bar. And they operate a system of electric locomotives, which you will see in the film. There is a passenger facility but uh, we didn't really uh, uh, venture beyond the yard. This is a bonus on the other side of the road. The major motive power is electric using these crocodile style prime movers and here is some passenger stock but it's all pretty run down they're not quite in the situation of needing steam traction engines to draw the rolling stock but it is in a state of some decline but does offer a service to the local community and uh, one hopes that that may continue.
This is the railway station at Matanza. Short train in at the station. The world and his wife walking around here. Lunch break, not far from the uh, grandma mail that we went to last year with the redundant locos. Got the same break stop, waiting forever for our cheese sandwiches. This is a bridge to nowhere across the railway which was built by the Russians when they were here. The bridge structure is there, but no embankments either side, so no way of getting onto the bridge. So the traffic still uses the hump of the level crossing there and runs the gauntlet of the trains. We'll now move on to what is an operational mill, Esteban Hernandez. And they're trying to sort out an overturned delivery wagon. The road of Cain has come to grief. And they're rapidly trying to uh, put it straight. These mills are a continuous process. The raw cane is delivered, as you can see there, in wagons, tipped into a grinding mechanism, which sorts out the worst of the chaff, and then the rest of the useful product is moved on through the mill, through the various processes. This series of wagons is being shunted by a little prime mover in the yard, but that's the way the fully operational mill works. It is a flow process. manager, the young man to Idaris is left there, treated us royally and entertained us in their little eating facility at the mill. We had grapefruit and uh, other bits and pieces before setting out along the line utilising the charter train which he has set up and hopefully will continue as a means of income for the mill because all these mills are suffering from a decline in the demand for sugar worldwide particularly from Cuba. We shall see how far it's pouring with rain unusual for Cuba. Oh, 
Pull it up. This little lad was fascinated by the camera, which brightened up, I guess, an otherwise pretty miserable wet day. Bless him. Train awaits, and off we go. There's only one railway tunnel on the uh, Cuban narrow gauge system 
and we're about to pass through it. tunnel on the system yeah. apparently. It's got to be one of the few tunnels on uh, as far as you can look. It's only one. It's the only one. On apparently it's the only one. These engines are oil fired with Venezuelan oil, or at least were at that time. The oil firing mechanism sort of creates a flash across the face of the firebox and this glow underneath the locomotive. Quite spectacular.
now moving to Grandma Mill, which is being demolished and there's a significant stock of scrapped steam engines just lying in the yard, as you'll see. It's adjacent to the mill called Grandma, where we went last year. Just in the foreground there, you can see one of the, one of the flywheels of the driving steam engines that drove these wonderful places. And that's just one flywheel, the circular green painted thing. But as you can see, the, the whole mill is, is in a state of dismemberment. As I said, the mill was in the process of being dismantled. The locomotives had been abandoned and were gradually being stripped by a gentleman that we saw on the site. And so the whole thing was a scene of dereliction and a shadow of its former working glory. Giants rusting, wheels that will turn no more. And there's the same locomotive on the other side. In exactly the same way as our old coal mining towns were supported by the local pit or pits, the sugar mills in Cuba supported their own communities and as one died so the other was left to struggle. But the ray of sunshine at the close of this little scene maybe, maybe, is a metaphor for a brighter future. Nature soon reclaims its own and the scenes at Australia Mill, originally a thriving mill, are evidence of the statement which I have just made. This is Australia Mill. This is one I didn't see last year. I hardly see it now. Good morning.
Here's the motion. But no co-motion. Here's another loco, number 1716. Some attempt is being made to run a charter train on the mill line and these chappies have it in hand to maintain in a running condition several of the locomotives. Time will tell what success they have in this venture. I'm fascinated by the motion. That's what I enjoy most. A couple more still images now of the work in hand or the rest in hand, whichever you prefer. Fifteen, its wheel sets removed. Whether they'll ever be reintroduced, who knows? This is sixteen oh seven. from a rather obscure angle. Another mill that I've been to previously, Mull Tiempo Mill. Bad times? That's an odd choice of name. Here we are, Mull Tiempo. And we're about to go out on this train. locos were here last year. Remember them? Preservation? I hope so.
and the first run past on the way out to the loading point. another for good measure. And these are the elevators at the loading point where the wagons are filled with the cut cane. And this is the first run past on the return. Oh, he's going it's away. It's extremely difficult to see the track on several of these run pasts. Thank <laughs> you. 
After leaving Maltiempo Mill, we moved on to Santa Clara, further down the island, which is associated significantly with Che Guevara. Hence, his memorial is there for all to see, together with some rather interesting natural creations, such as this tree trunk being carved with a human likeness, and nature's beauty in the shape of flowers. And in a moment or tell you, you'll hear the bird song. And then from there, we moved on to Venezuela Mill for more railways. The memorial is an impressive enough structure for us to have a look at a couple more images before we move to Venezuelan Mill. Interestingly, Grandma Mill was named after the boat that Che Guevara used when he first came to the Cuban island. So all these mill names are very significant in Cuban revolutionary history. Okay, it just turned on the triangle.
that's idling now. Venezuela shed, engine shed. Presumably out of order. In each cylinder, so that's one cylinder head. And there's the second one. Obviously they're sprung then, so as you cut through it, to nearly to the point yes. of, of the edge, yes. and then you use a cold chisel, Yes. Right. Yes. Splits and the rest of it is still sprung. Yes. It right. just pops and off. It pops off. I saw them doing it at uh, Swindon Works. What well, actually heating? Yes. Right. What? Put them on or take them off? Put them on. After that treatise on retiring a locomotive wheel, there's the inevitable group shot. We are now off on a rather bumpy ride. be a Baldwin loco from 1920. That's the uh, 1920s loco. It still has its uh, 
make this place on it. The run pass using the locomotive from Venezuela Mill were, I think, the highlights of this part of our visit. The driver gave the engine its head and put on a spectacular display. Well worth watching. Tree in the foreground. Mm -hmm. 